Kind of a cute little dish. <laughs> Good morning, Grovis. Woo hoo hoo! It's um, it's Thursday. I, it's I don't know what day this is for. To be honest, it's it is for a day where we're gonna eat ice cream. Mm hmm. Cause it's delicious. Um, we want you to know we are still supporting our beloved Silver Lining. But we couldn't pick between all of the flavors today because they have a lot of really awesome new flavors. new flavors. So we had to get a whole bunch of them. I have four different flavors in my bowl right now. I have four flavors in my bowl right now, and we have more for later because that's how much we love this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. We wanted to talk about, well, first of all, I will tell you, it dawned on us this week based on a conversation I had with you eighth graders and then also with one of our high school classes um, that we haven't really told you, or at least haven't told you the full story. Or explicitly told you? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure, but we haven't been super clear about how it is that we came to believe in Jesus and like what that looks like, what our faith journey, or some people call it testimony, actually is. And so we thought um, we would um, share, we're not going to really share much of it today with no. you. But we're going to talk gonna, a little bit about it, about what a faith story is and what that looks like and how different people's looks different. Yeah, so um, we don't, sharing people's faith stories is something that's really vulnerable. And for whatever reason, we just don't do it in the Midwest because we think that it's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's something that, that I think is actually very helpful and beneficial for people mm -hmm. to know a little bit about how their walk with Jesus is how it currently is and how they got to where they're at because we learn a lot about our own faith and we hear it from other people's but the thing that's that's so um hard about this is i think we often think we all walk the same path and that's why we don't have to talk about it like the the generic story in um in a, especially this part of the world is i grew up in a a, a house that we went to church. We especially went to like church on Christmas and Easter, and I, I was confirmed and baptized, and, and so I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, but guess, guess what? There's a lot of you watching this video that that's not your story. <laughs> um, it's it's kind of just that was my story. It's it's perceived as though we all have the same story, but we all have actually very different stories, mm -hmm. um, different ways that we can know Jesus. Yeah, just like we're all in different places in our faith, we all have different places on, or different stories on how we came to that faith. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would just um, share a little bit about how different people can come to their faith. And and we are going to be inviting other people to share their faith and share their stories with you. We're going to do it too, Mr. Norell and I. Yeah. Um, but so that you can hear other people's voices and hear what other people have to say, we are going to invite um, other people. So teachers and friends of ours to come on in and share their face story or maybe just record their face. Oh, I just got, I got a new one in my head that I'm really oh, excited about. What's that? I'm just a person that we're going to ask. Oh, ooh. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Oh, wait. I, I wait. can't, I can't tell them who we're going to ask because we don't know if they're going to say yes or not. We can't pressure them that way. Oh, I like to do the guilt trip. Well, just kidding. I don't. That's beautiful. Those leaves. The leaves out. outside it is a beautiful day. Also, it's going to snow this weekend. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dear Jesus, help us all. Oh, okay, but you, you had a you had a really good analogy about different kinds of, of stories. Mm, yeah. I think you should tell them. Okay, so so I think like Mr. Norell was saying, like we all just like assume we came to faith in the same way. But I've actually heard it said before that there are different ways that people come to faith. And um if you think about cooking, right? Anybody out there like to cook? I do. I, I'm a terrible cook, but I love no. Mm. I, I like to go off book. He really does. He never follows a recipe. I don't like to cook. He does, but I'm not great at it. My husband's awesome at it. So he does most of the cooking. Anyway, when you cook, you cook using different instruments, like different devices. And so like a trumpet or a tuba. No, <laughs> like, like a microwave, which is my kind of cooking <laughs> yeah. or a crock pot, or some people call it a slow cooker. And so I've heard it said before that you can compare, like people can compare their faith to that. So like, for example, some people have faith that's like a slow cooker. So you put all the ingredients in in the morning and it slowly cooks all day long until you have this wonderful meal at night. And then some people 
cook using a microwave where you literally you stick the thing in the microwave you hit the one minute button and it like cooks it in a minute and you're done like that is me one of my favorite things about a microwave is corn dogs because they're like literally 30 50 seconds something like that and chicken patties you can get them done instantly you can also make them in the oven but why would you make them in the oven when you can have them instantly i don't know i don't like corn dogs but i, I think our faith is the same actually totally. um I, I think that we often would wish that we had like a boom instant everything is good in my faith i understand it um but i think that there's a lot of us that that actually it, it happened kind of slowly and there's nothing wrong with with our faith kind of being something that we grow into the the kind of stories that people often share are the ones that are like the microwave where it's like boom instant because it's an easy story to tell it's i i had this transformative moment um and now because of that i have this grandiose story that i can tell you because my leg reappeared <laughs> i don't know i think it was something really crazy um, but if, if I did not have a leg and I all of a sudden had a leg, obviously I'd be telling everybody about that because that'd be a really grandiose story. However, when I grew up as a baby in a, a Christian house and I continued going to church throughout my whole life and um, then I got confirmed and I was involved in my church and that, like, that kind of a story, oftentimes it's just people, they're almost ashamed because they they don't have like a, an exact moment that they really feel like they understood who Jesus was. And it's just not true. It's not true. So that's like the slow cooker thing. That's a slow cooker. I'm a slow where, cooker. Where you grew up in the church. You were baptized yeah. as a baby. You grew up in the church your whole life. And you have just like sort of sunken into this like reality that I know that Jesus is real. And and you maybe didn't have one of those like bam right now moments. It's the slow cooker faith. Yeah. And I actually have the opposite of that. So Norell is saying that he's got this slow I'm cooker a slow faith. Cooker. I actually have the microwave faith um, where I actually can tell you the moment that it happened. Like it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's like grandiose. Like my leg didn't like get cut off and it reappeared or anything like that. So they're not all like that. That's a but, little excessive. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't heard that story personally. Yeah, no, I haven't either. But <laughs> my story is definitely the microwave faith where I went on this retreat and I'll tell you guys my story another day, but um, I went on this retreat and I just like, bam, like had this moment where I was like, whoa, just like super overwhelmed with the power of God. And so like, it's, it's a microwave, like it was zapped and it was there, but it wasn't like my faith isn't still cooking. Like, I don't want you guys to think that like, just because I had like this, like, powerful one moment with Jesus and like it was like everything made sense to me um because it was this powerful one moment with Jesus that made me know he was real but I I have continued now to slow cook after that where I continue to learn new things and and settle into like just knowing um these really simple truths that probably a lot of you guys who are slow cooker faith people um have known since you were little it's taken me um it's taken me a little longer to try to figure those out now because I'm like, there were things I didn't learn growing up. Like, I don't know, Jesus loves me or things like that. I think we should change the analogy because 2020. So now we have things cooler, cooler than a microwave. What's cooler than a microwave? An instant pot. Instant pot versus a slow cooker. But instant pots aren't really like instant. Well, but I think it's even more fitting. And here's okay. why. Okay, you say An it. instant pot cooks quickly but it still continues to get better with time. I don't even know how an Instant Pot works, but cool. I'm gonna trust you on that. Okay, <laughs> so I have an Instant Pot faith. You have an Instant Pot faith. It okay. cooks instantly, but it still gets better with time. Cool, I like that. Anyway, so in the coming uh, weeks, we will, we're gonna be inviting some people to Ice Cream Chapel. We might have people just like recording their stories on how they um, like really knew that Jesus was real and what that looked like in their own life. So that you guys will have an opportunity to see that maybe your faith is like somebody else's. Um, it, uh, everybody's journey is different for sure. But maybe you don't have to feel so crazy and weird because you didn't have like this one moment of like knowing Jesus was real. Um, or maybe you will realize that, yeah, like that we all have our own stories and everybody's story is different. And, and everybody's Ding. story is valid. Ding. Bell. Ding. <laughs> don't go anywhere because you still are in chapel. <laughs> <laughs> But that's all that we need for you today.
Um, but you can expect that we're going to have some more of these coming along. Yeah. I think we should pray. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll pray. Okay, cool. Jesus, um, thank you so much that um, you show yourself to each one of us in different ways. God, um, some of us, uh, maybe it's quick and fast that we know who you are, and some of us it's slower. It's a, more of a slow cook. Um, but God, um, nonetheless, God, um, we just are so thankful that you show yourself to us. God, I pray for anybody today who maybe um, hasn't had a real experience with you and just are kind of waiting to, to have that confirmation and that real experience with you to know that you're real. Um, God, just reveal yourself to us. And God, um, as we continue to learn and grow and, and find out what it means um, to walk with you, God, I just pray um, God, that you would put the right people in our path to help us, um, to lead us and to guide us and to show us the way. Jesus, we love you and we just thank you. Thank you for who you are. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Bye, Grovers. Bye, guys. We'll see you later.